Well, well, well. We need to talk about uh, gawking at your watches, ogling at your watches. You're a watch obsessive. You open up your watch boxes and you're looking at all the little delicious treasures. And uh, they all look so good and, you know, they're on your little price hierarchy, your little uh, luxury hierarchy. If you're a watch obsessive, uh, you probably eventually gravitate toward one watch that is your comfort zone. It's your favorite watch. It's your default watch. It's the watch you wear uh, when you come home from work. You just take off whatever watch you're wearing. you got to put on the watch. And I'm fascinated to know what your watch is. Um, it doesn't have anything to do with price, apparently. You know, I have some uh, fancy watches. Uh, well, in my little smaller scale of luxury, I have some fancy ones. Uh, yesterday, I wore uh, my Orient Saturation Diver, which I love quite a bit. Let me see if I can get it for you. And uh, the Orient Saturation Diver is, is I guess, my most expensive watch. Uh, you know... It, they usually go for about $1,300, and uh, Johnny Casual emailed me about a year ago or so and said he found one on Creation Watches for 1000 bucks on sale, and I bought it, and I don't regret buying it. The only thing I don't like about it is the stock bracelet. This has the uh, strap code uh, Super Engineer 2 on it. Uh, so I do love this watch quite a bit. You're getting a lot for your money. It does bring you into the luxury club at a relatively low price. A little bit of a 3D uh, dial in there. Uh, it's not my favorite watch. Um, perhaps it has too many conventional Rolex diver cues on it. I don't know. It, it's not individual enough to represent my individuality. I don't know. But it's not uh, my favorite watch. It's in my top three, probably. Uh, I'll give you another watch that I love a lot. It's not my favorite watch. Um, this is the uh, Seiko Promaster Sky Black. It's a beautiful 44-millimeter uh, watch. It plays very big. It plays like a 45. Now, this is Echo Drive Quartz. And... Uh, it's a beautiful watch. feels a little delicate on me to be my favorite watch. It's light. It's titanium. It has Duratec coating, which is supposed to protect it from scratches. Uh, it's a little busy to be my favorite watch. It's a little delicate. The same could be said about the silver version, which I have. Uh, both of these are said to have uh, anti-reflective sapphire coating. I hope so. Sometimes I notice the... Uh, the silver one seems like it's lacking in that reflective quality, anti-reflective quality. But I, I love it. a little delicate to be my very favorite. Um, then there's my uh, my great transitional watch, the watch that emancipated me from TV fashion watches and looking like I was a, a wannabe performer from Las Vegas. This is the Toolish uh, Seiko Tuna which uh, is on also a super engineer bracelet. And I wore this a couple weeks ago to work, and I remember I was relieved to take it off as much as I like it and put on my very favorite watch, which I'll get to in a second. Um, I, the only thing about the Tuna is uh, it's, um, it's a quartz, and I don't feel that connected to watches that are operated by quartz batteries. Uh, I don't feel that connected to them. So uh, it's not my favorite watch. I love it. I wouldn't. It's a keeper. I'm wearing a uh, Orient M Force. You know, I this is a rebuy, and Johnny Casual warned me that with rebuys, I tend to not keep them. I may sell it. I'm not in love. I don't know. I don't know why. It looks like it reminds me of a zebra. I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. I may sell it. Well, my fa very favorite watch, three hundred dollar watch. It is the uh, the third generation Seiko Black Monster SRP six three seven. Now, this is not the stock bracelet. Um, I took. I, it's going to be fine for most, the stock bracelet. But this is a, a strap code uh, end mill. I like it on the end mill a lot. I'm kind of torn. I almost. Help me out, guys. Should I, should I exchange this end mill with the, uh, the super engineer that's on my uh, Orient Saturation Diver? Would that be, uh, would that be better? But any, in any event. Uh, this is my very favorite watch. This is my comfort zone watch. This is the watch, uh, not only do I always put this on when I come home, but uh, 
when I go out and I wear it, I never regret having it on. It, it feels like it's me. Do you guys have a watch? It's like it's you. Uh, I remember in the late 1990s, there was a Lexus commercial, and they would have this guy with a deep voice narrating about how you become one with your Lexus. And it had this animated, muscular man, but you could see through his skin. He was like a from an anatomy textbook, he would walk, and he would walk inside the Lexus and become one with it. Well, that's kind of geeking out, isn't it? Well, that's how I feel with my uh, Seiko SRP637, uh, more than any watch I have. I, I identify with it the most, and I don't even know if I deserve to tell you that I identify with this. To be more accurate, I think maybe this is more of an aspirational watch, and what does this represent that I aspire to be? Well, this to me is the ultimate tool watch, and I love a really uh, good tool watch because a tool watch represents a man who uh, who is functional, and I'm completely dysfunctional. So, uh, what what do I mean by dysfunctional? Well, let's not be too hard on ourselves, but uh, you know, my father's an engineer, and uh, he was never the type of guy who would hire someone to do something around the house. My father can just look at something and say, oh, this is how it works, and this is what we're going to do. And uh, we would do stuff, and I don't have that talent. And uh, my neighbor's the same way. He's an engineer, and he just showed me how he took apart his dryer. You know, it would have been like an $800 job. He goes, that was a loose screw, man. There's no magic to this, man. I just took the, the cylinder out of here, took out the drum. He showed me all the pieces he took out. Now, granted, he's retired, and he has time to do stuff like that. But man, the idea of being self-reliant, uh, which I've been thinking about because I did a video about uh, working class bias and uh, contractors that I know who can do everything and they're so self-reliant uh, that I admire them, whatever their status may be in the uh, work world. But perhaps I love the tool watch because it represents what I aspire to be. Uh, and... Uh, I had a watch, the second generation Black Monster, which I sold. I regret selling it. Johnny Casual warns me, though, don't rebuy. You always sell the rebuys. And uh, it was similar to this. This one's, um, this one's advertised at 47.5 millimeters. That's completely not true. This is 46 millimeters, bezel to bezel. It's a 46. Plays like a 46. It is a 46. Don't let anyone tell you it's 47 and a half or 48. Uh, it's big enough, though. It plays nicely on the wrist. It's a very uh, significant timepiece. It has great loom. You know, the SRP307, the second generation Black Monster, had shark teeth, which I liked. It was a 43 millimeter. Loved it. Man, I <laughs> wish I had it back. The thing is, I'm kind of glad I don't have it because then it would compete with this as my, my identity watch, my default watch, my comfort zone watch. I'm not sure it's good to have two like that, man. They might cancel each other out. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm assuming everyone out there in watch obsessive land, uh, you have your own comfort watch, your own uh, watch that represents either what you identify with or what you aspire to be. I'd be curious to know what yours is. I don't think it has anything to do with price point, uh, but uh, my guess is if you're a watch obsessive, you kind of think the same way. Until then, I am out.